Describe types of smart sensors. Smart sensors give machines the power to monitor more information and easily share the information with other connected devices via Ethernet or the Internet. Some smart sensors can communicate data about their own health so they can be adjusted or replaced before they fail. A smart sensor consists of a transducer that converts a physical measurement into an electrical signal. A microprocessor that provides diagnostics, data processing, and memory so the sensor can check itself and communicate information. And communication circuitry to transmit data. There are a variety of smart sensors available. Common types of smart sensors include Temperature measures amount of heat energy. Pressure measures system pressure, hydraulic or pneumatic. Humidity measures the water vapor in an atmosphere. Proximity detects the presence of nearby objects. And level measures the level of fluids or other substances. Smart sensors are widely used in many industries. Examples include monitoring temperature and vibration on motors to warn when out-of-limit readings occur. Sensing surroundings in automatic guided vehicles used to move parts from storage to the production line. And monitoring vital signs of steelmaker employees through sensors in helmets and wristbands to help maintain employee health and safety. Smart sensors are being used in almost every industry. In logistics, smart sensors perform real-time checking of the impact of product shipments on air quality, noise, and traffic. Corrections can then be made to reduce any impacts. Sensors in roads, bridges, and tunnels detect fog, rain, snow, weight, air quality, noise, wind speed, and other road conditions. These measurements can be used to alert drivers of possible hazards. Smart sensors are becoming more common in agriculture. Sensors placed in grain storage units check humidity, mold counts, and insects. Sensors attached to livestock help track their health by detecting body temperature, glucose, and chemicals. Sensors can also track livestock movement. Describe types of automatic identification used in IIoT. Automatic identification and data collection devices provide data about products to controllers and computer databases. AIDC can be used to identify, check, record, and store data about products. AIDC technologies include barcodes, radio frequency identification, machine vision, and near-field communications. AIDC combined with IIoT allows companies to track products and other assets no matter where they are located. Barcodes are a series of parallel lines and spaces or a pattern of geometric shapes. Barcode scanners read the patterns and convert them into alphanumeric data. Barcodes can identify parts as they go through a process, so planned operations can be performed on the parts or the parts can be directed. Scanner types include laser scanners and machine vision imaging units, which take photos of barcodes. Radio frequency identification uses radio waves to exchange information between an RFID tag and a reader. Tags store more data than barcodes and can be placed on products, packages, or equipment. RFID tags do not have to be in the line of sight of the reader as do barcodes. RFID readers can also read multiple tags from a distance at once. These features make RFID a good tool for tracking large amounts of inventory. 
Machine vision uses cameras to capture images of products, which can be used not only to read barcodes but can also be used to locate the position or state of a product. Fanuc, for example, makes robots with machine vision that can pick randomly placed parts from a bin or a conveyor. Near-field communications allows identification and transfer of data between two NFC-enabled devices. NFC is like Bluetooth with less range and more security. Devices must be within 10 centimeters to communicate. NFC chips contain more data than barcodes and let smartphones and tablets connect with equipment. NFC chips also enable the connecting of previously unconnected machines to the IIoT. NFC chips can be placed in replacement parts to confirm that they are genuine. In order for near-field communication devices to work properly, the devices must be located within what range? What is the acronym AIDC an abbreviation for? Which of the following items is included in a smart sensor? Which of the below items is used with machine vision systems? Which AIDC technology can read multiple items from a distance at the same time? What gives machines the power to monitor information and easily share the information with other connected devices? What do barcodes consist of? Define cloud computing and its benefits. Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet. The hardware and software used in cloud computing, such as servers, storage, and databases, are located off-site from the point of use. Cloud computing allows companies to rent rather than own their computing resources. IT services are on demand, expanding and contracting as needed. Pricing for these services is pay-as-you-go. Cloud computing provides three service types: infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. IaaS has the smallest external service scope of the three cloud service types. Clients build and maintain their own software using the provider's computer hardware and data storage space. Clients retain the most control and flexibility with this service. Platform as a service is the next level up in scope of service. PaaS includes all aspects of IaaS. Additionally, PaaS gives clients an on-demand space for developing, testing, delivering, and managing software. The clients own the software they develop. The PaaS provider owns everything else, such as the development software clients need to build applications and for database management.
Software as a service, which includes all PaaS features, is the largest scope of service in cloud computing. Clients rent the use of software from the provider, and their users connect to the software over the internet. All the basic resources, software, and data are located with the service provider. The service provider manages all hardware and software. For example, Boeing uses SAAS providers for predictive aircraft maintenance and to optimize fuel use. Three ways to set up cloud computing are private, public, and hybrid. Private computing resources are located on the client's intranet or data center. Public computing resources are owned by the service provider. For example, Rockwell Automation has an SaaS public service called Factory Talk Analytics. Machine builders add a gateway device that connects their machines to the cloud. Rockwell then offers customers monitoring and maintenance services. Hybrid resources combine public and private clouds. Cloud computing is very popular today and is a rapidly growing market segment for many large companies such as Amazon and Microsoft. Over 90% of global businesses report using the cloud. The benefits of cloud computing include reduced cost. Clients only pay for resources used and avoid the upfront cost and complexity of owning and maintaining IT resources. Speed. Clients quickly get projects up to speed. There is no software to develop or hardware to install. Productivity. Clients rely on outside experts and not on in-house talent. And reliability. Data backup and recovery are easier for clients. Data can be stored at multiple redundant sites. Cloud computing does have some drawbacks, though. Examples include. Using the same SaaS systems as a competitor uses removes the chance for a competitive advantage. Cost of renting services may be higher than if kept in-house. Increased risk of data breach. Potential loss of an internet connection. And countries where data is stored may become politically unstable, creating the possibility of losing control of the data. Define edge and fog computing. Cloud computing is often combined with edge computing, which is computing done near the source of the data. This combination reduces data flow from connected devices to the cloud, which reduces costs and improves speed of responses. Edge devices, such as sensors and machines, produce data. Edge devices equipped with computing power can make faster decisions and adjustments than with the cloud alone. Fog computing, like edge computing, is located near where the data is collected. The fog layer consists of servers providing connections between edge devices and the cloud. The fog layer performs some data analysis and then sends data to the cloud. For example, Fanix ZDT system links its robots to a Cisco fog device that processes the data before sending it to the cloud for more analysis. Edge and fog computing are driven by the need to address concerns in three areas: latency, 
data security, and bandwidth. Latency refers to the time it takes to send data over a network and receive a response. Depending on the application, the latency can be a problem. For example, current 4G latency of 50 milliseconds is too long for some IIoT applications, as well as for self-driving cars. Edge and fog computing reduce latency, which results in faster data analysis and responses. Sending huge amounts of data over a network to cloud storage presents security risks. Storage of some sensitive data in edge devices is thought to be more secure. For example, Apple stores customer biometric data on customer phones, not in a cloud. Bandwidth refers to the volume of data per unit of time that an internet connection can handle. Transmitting a huge amount of data to the cloud requires a large bandwidth, which may not be available. If the available bandwidth is not sufficient, data transfer is slowed. For example, a mining operation at a very remote location may not have affordable and consistent bandwidth, so edge computing becomes a requirement. What is bandwidth?